Welcome back to the kitchen build thing, whatever we're calling this part of the renovation, building the cabinetry. This time we're gonna be working on this, uh, this giant cabinet here. So this is one of the end pillars of the run. We have the refrigerator surround on one side and this sort of bookends the other side. This is a full height cabinet with drawers and a retractable pocket door. And the idea here is this is the appliance garage. So the countertop is gonna be continuous. Well, there'll be a break in it, obviously, but there'll be a countertop inside of here. We have the receptacles back here on the lower section for like uh, countertop appliances, you know, whatever, toaster, blender, whatever you want to put in here. The second level here is for the microwave. So all those things are hidden out of the way. Once you close the door, you don't have to look at any of the countertop appliances, which we're really excited about. The, uh, the countertop space should be like clear and uncluttered. <laughs> And this will help to make it a little bit more uh, feasible. So in the first cabinetry video, we made this face frame, having it sitting here. Now I know it's an inch too tall. I'm gonna go down to the shop, cut this thing down an inch, get it glued together, and then we're gonna start actually making the box, the giant box, which is gonna go here and feature that uh, pocket door hardware, which I still have to figure out because uh, it's got a big instruction manual. Okay, while this is in the clamps, I want to get started on the side panels so I can get both the face frame and the panels off the paint while I figure out some of the hardware. So let me just kind of run you through what's going to be happening with these uh, side panels. So here is an elevation view of the front of the cabinet so we have an idea of what the front's going to look like. Uh, just to kind of run through things again real quick, this is a pocket door so it opens and goes back down into this pocket here uh, and then the drawers the fronts are continuous with the door stock, which is this V-groove paneling. Uh, so that's why this face frame only has this lower rail and this upper rail and the two styles. So that's, we'll get into that a little more in a bit, but let's go around to this face here. The face is going to be touching the other cabinets. That's a, uh, a view of the side panel that's going to go there. So the only kind of thing we need to consider here is going to be the show. We talked about this before with the, um, the side panel for the, uh, the buffet cabinet. So this front one is going to be lapped. So we're going to take away the thickness of the face frame from this one to get our four inch show. So this rail or the style on this panel is going to be three and a quarter wide. Uh, in the back, we got a four inch show. I've got tile backsplash going back there, which I don't want to totally negate. I mean, there's a little bit of thickness there. So I will add that to the back here so that when the tile is actually on there, you still see four inches of this, uh, this style. And then the other thing is down here on the bottom, we got a four inch show uh, here. So we have to figure out where the countertop is. So where this kind of ends up is where the height's gonna be. And then I'll probably make someone a little wider just in case we have a little bit of leeway uh, down just in case. Up top, we have the crown. It's gonna be covering everything, so I need to make sure I have a four inch show after the crown goes onto the cabinet. So this one's gonna be a little bit of, it says four, but all of these are gonna be different widths. And then whatever is left up in the middle to get our full width will be the remainder for these panel pieces. Okay, going on around to the other side of the cabinet. Oop, there it is right there. So it goes right into those steps there. We're gonna have the same sort of calculation thing with the, uh, 
the styles. We have the lap joint over here, so we still want four inch show. So we'll take away the face frame. Back here we have a three quarter inch thick casing. So we'll add that onto this one. So this back one will be wider so that when that casing drops on, you'll see four inches. Uh, the V-groove paneling goes all the way to the top. Again, we're gonna have the same situation on top with the width of this guy. So we end up with a four inch show. And then we'll have to go up to the kitchen and get the angle for this uh, skirt board, or which will become the skirt board for the steps. So we'll have to get that figured out. But uh, I'm gonna get started by just uh, making the V-groove paneling stock. That's gonna be from that, uh, oh, that water-resistant MDF stuff again. After I figure out the actual remaining width I'm gonna need, then I'll go ahead and make all my strips and I will glue them back together using my uh, chamfer and smaller bearing technique because uh, it's just easier for me. Okay, there is that one there, just, uh, you know, upside down. <laughs> Let's try and figure out uh, this one here, because this is going to get a little bit more interesting, because that skirt needs to be at the right location, obviously, and, you know, at the right angle, or roughly the right angle. So I already picked up the angle of the stairs. I took a straight edge and laid it across the risers, or I guess the treads, yeah, where the treads and risers meet, the very tippy tip there, and then picked up the angle from the straight edge to the wall, 
which gives me basically the angle the stairs are at. So that's what my bevel gauge is set to. So I'm gonna run through this and uh, try and visualize this myself and hopefully bring you along with this mental process that I have going on here. So I have my, uh, I don't know what you wanna call it, a top, top rail sitting there. This style is flush. My face frame is sitting on here flush. That's the, uh, the final height, or that's where this one needs to be cut to. And that's gonna include that half inch scribe that I have on the face frame. So I wanna keep that in mind as I'm kind of laying things out. I already know that this area of the floor is lower, so I'll probably be down into this a little further than on all the other ones, but I'm just gonna draw it at that half inch, assuming it all gets you know, removed. So in theory, that would be the actual finished bottom of the cabinet. And basically that's touching the floor in theory. It's getting back down here somewhere because the floor dips, but I'm just gonna lay it out like that for now. Right here is where the steps are. And this is the riser uh, that'll be applied. And that's gonna end up being somewhere on here like this. So everything kind of over here and on doesn't get seen because it is covered beneath the actual stairs. And I know my riser height on the framing is seven inches right now. And by the time I actually get my tread on there, I can include that in this lid as well. That should be about three quarters. So I have a th seven and three quarter inch rise on that first step right around there. So this is the first spot that is visible above the staircase. And from my picture, I know we want the uh, skirt board to come in and give us about three inches of coverage down here. So three inches up, that would be the very tippy top of the skirt board. So that would be the angle would start right around there. Take this out of here for a second. This is where our skirt board would be, I think. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, so for some fun here, just to further visualize things, I wanna go ahead and cut the skirt board. I'm gonna make that skirt board out of the MDF material because it's gonna be pretty wide. I need to be, I need to get all the way down here into the very you know, corner of the rise and tread that first step. So I think it needs to be at least seven inches wide. I'm just gonna go ahead and make it, you know, probably more like nine or 10 inches wide. Uh, the only kind of weird thing here is that my frame is seven eighths and my panel is three quarters. So this bottom piece will be three quarters well, but I'll have to kind of mess around with the thickness a little bit to get it to end up, you know, proud of the panel and flush with the, uh, frame. something like that. I left it a little long right now because I will trim it flush once it's attached on three sides before attaching this one. And that means that the only other little detail I have here is that the top of this is clipped and I want a two inch flat spot there. So I know my piece is already about a quarter inch too long. So my square is at two and a quarter and wherever my ruler actually touches the, uh, the angle there. That's where that cut needs to be. Okay, I got the panel in this uh, front style clamped in place. So I can just put my skirt board on here and get it in position, which I have my layout lines on there. So with that sitting right there, I need to cut the panel right to this line.
<laughs> Perfect. So there is uh, this side panel all ready to go. I'm a little out of breath. I just got back from carrying this thing upstairs and making sure that it actually fit. And uh, fortunately and happily, it actually is correct. It looks pretty good. The steps come into here as we're supposed to. So this is uh, officially a success. So before I take this out for paint, I figure while I'm actually out here doing stuff, I might as well cut all my domino mortises now to join my panels to my face frame. That way after they're done and painted and the whole case is built, I'll just be able to slap them together and uh, flush them out and do my final paint. So uh, I figure while I'm at it, I might as well take a few things and cross them off the future to-do list. So while those panels, and I guess the face frame is off in the paint shop, I'm gonna dive into the uh, pocket door mechanism and try and figure out how it goes together and how it works. I got a 64, 64 page instruction manual to go through for this thing. So just to give you a little bit of a, I don't know, a setup for this, this pocket door mechanism, uh, so you have your cabinet door, when the door opens and hits 90, it gets pulled into the pocket automatically, and then it's, I don't know, it's cool, whatever. So this mechanism is intended for a little bit of a different use case than what we're doing here. Uh, it's intended for the, I guess, the panel that the mechanism is attached to is like the false side of the case and then the actual side of the case gets clipped on to the mechanism. That way, if you need to get at the mechanism, you just pull the side of the case off and you can do whatever you want on the mechanism in case something breaks or, or whatever. That's obviously not gonna work in this case for, I guess, for two reasons. We have a fixed panel on the side, which is into a staircase that's not coming off ever in the future. And we also have this not a full height and there's no break in the case, so, to kind of solve that, what I have come up with is to put the mechanism onto a removable panel that then gets slid in and attached to the real partition in the case. So this is gonna make my partition in there you know, basically twice as thick as was intended. So we'll lose a little bit of interior space, but it shouldn't be too big of, a, of an issue. So I'm gonna jump in here and see 
how this goes. This panel is a little bit oversized in length, the one I think I need. And then I also have this piece of edge banding on here, which is tamped on. That's gonna give me my full depth so I can kind of lay things out, make sure it's all here perfectly, and kind of wrap my head around all this hardware. This has been like one of those things in the back of my mind that I've been kind of putting off because it's, there's instructions, but like, I wasn't able to find like any videos of the assembly or like any real like, here is it installed stuff. So we'll see. Maybe I just missed it all, but I'm gonna power through and see if I can get this mechanism assembled at least. Okay, I'm gonna pause here with figuring this whole thing out because uh, at this point, for me to continue mocking this thing up in place, I need to actually cut this rail to its final length. Uh, and I don't wanna do that because I don't have all that much confidence that this total height of this panel is correct. So I want to uh, kind of move on to building the cabinet and then I can figure out the rest of this. But it, uh, it took me a couple hours to get to this point, but I feel a lot better about uh, what I'm what I'm looking at here things make a lot more sense now, which which is great So essentially this rail will be sliding inside of these uh, top and bottom rails And then there's a scissor mechanism in here That attaches here and here and sucks this rail back into the cabinet and the door attaches to this and that gets sucked in with it. So um, I Feel a lot more confident now at least so let's uh, get the face frame and we'll start making the uh, case carcass side things. Case thing, the box situation. Get that made. Okay, so that data was for the uh, horizontal divider thing. Since that horizontal divider is gonna carry the pocket door and it's gonna carry the shelf, not shelf, the, um, the countertop that's gonna be mounted in here, I wanted actually be a shear for this connection. And I'm, I'm kind of thinking I'll probably do that for the bottom too, since that's part of what supports this thing going to the floor. We have the face frame and the foot that contacts the floor at the front. And then this thing's mounted to the wall with the back panel, but a little extra support down there, I think it's probably gonna be fine. Luckily, I still have all my stuff set up so I can go back and do that pretty easily. But I'm gonna start prepping the, the right side panel, the right side panel and the partition panel, because those are like the interior stuff you're gonna see. They need their shelf pins. That's what I'm gonna do now. And then I have a uh, bus bar for interior lighting to route in as well. So I bought this uh, shelf pin template thing in the past I've made my own, but I thought, you know what, I'll try an actual like purchased one. This one does have these clips that you can attach to the edge so you can actually like, you know, hook it onto the edge at your standard shelf pin from the edge distance and just work your way that way. Um, this of course is not a standard distance because the shelves aren't the full depth. So I have a little spacer here that I'll use to just set the thing when I start it, clamp it in place and then work my way down. It also has the little indexing pins, so as you go, you can index the jig and you can kind of move up and down. I got a plunge router with a uh, guide bushing and a five millimeter bit. And we're gonna do half inch deep um, shelf pin holes. I'm using, this is all metric. I could really mess with you guys and do 
uh, five millimeter shelf and holes on one inch spacings. <laughs> but uh, one inch seems a little close together for me. So we're gonna do the 32 millimeter spacing with the five millimeter bit. Okay, so that's the shelf pin holes. Next up is this, uh, this bus bar. It's this little piece of aluminum that gets inlaid into the side of the case. And that is going to uh, provide power for the lights. They'll be on the underside of all the adjustable shelves. Under the shelves, there'll be like a light bar that's inlaid in there. And on the end, it has these little like, I don't know, spring-loaded tab things that push into the bus bar, which is energized. And that's how it gets power, so you can put your shelves anywhere without any wires connecting to the lights, which is kind of slick. Uh, it has this special router bit to create the channel for this profile. So this should go pretty quickly. I have another router that I'll set up just for doing this. And uh, this should be pretty easy, <laughs> I hope. So there is, uh, there's this. For some reason, I thought these were press fit, but clearly they're not. So I guess I'll just epoxy those in at some point. But there's that kind of look, and then, well, I don't have them yet, but on the, the shelves, we'll have the little light bar thing that just touches that and gets its power. This thing is energized by a little thing I got to mount somewhere in the cabinet that just energizes the bar. And just for reference, that's the little uh, energizer dealy wacky. So this just gets screwed on top of this bar somewhere that's, you know, maybe concealed. <laughs> and that provides power to this thing, which then provides power to the lights. Okay, I think that takes care of a lot of everything. So I'm gonna start on some assembly and getting this thing looking like an actual uh, cabinet box thing. So I have, let's see, I got the partition, which has got some edge banding on it. That'll get trimmed up flush. And then I need the bottom, which is the same size as this, into the dado. And then the top will just be between the two pieces. I don't really feel like putting a dado in for the top. We got a face frame to attach. So we got, uh, uh, it was, I thought it was going to be a little bit of work, but it's actually going to be a good amount of things to do to get this thing into some kind of box form.
Okay, I would say that's a cabinet of substance. That's uh, that's quite big. So next, we need this partition to go in here, and the exact location of that partition is kind of important because it's going to set the final pocket size for the hardware. Uh, the hardware needs 55 millimeters for its clearance, and then I need the, whatever the thickness of that backer plywood piece actually holds the hardware, and then the partition starts, and that needs to be in the right spot and everything. I could use the domino to join and align this partition, but for the sake of variety, since we're already doing dados, I'm gonna do that again. I've just pulled the top uh, back out. I was going to cut this dado in place, but um, I got thinking. I did a thing where I think again, <laughs> and I got back to thinking about lighting and lighting for the top shelf. Uh, I could add a second light fixture thing and mount that directly to the top of the cabinet and have that be on its own thing. But just to make it more seamless and easy, the lighting for each shelf gets cut into the you know shelf above so after i cut this dado for the partition i'm going to go ahead and cut a groove in here for the light bar to actually mount into the top so it'll be kind of like it'll be a fixed shelf essentially using the same the same hardware so that one is going to require a 13 millimeter wide groove which is more than a half inch so i will make that 13 millimeter groove uh, in two passes. But that groove will be the same as the underside of all of the adjustable shelves that I'll make later. And since my bus bar goes up kind of into the, the top of the cabinet and the, the side panel, actually the bus bar goes all the way to the very top of the cabinet, I'll still have area there for the light to actually touch the bus bar and pick up power from it. Okay, with that partition in there, now we can get back to this thing. And now we have the actual final size of this. So we'll see if that's anywhere near correct and go from there. Okay, I need 58 and 9 sixteenths. So I'm like two inches too long, which is better than the other way. <laughs> I think I was planning on this being too big anyway. 
So all that really means is that I got to start over, but that's not that big of a deal now that I've done it once. I uh, actually kind of know <laughs> what I'm doing, or at least understand what I'm doing. So that's it's not, a, not a huge, huge deal. So I'm going to go through and do this all over again. And now I should cut all my pieces down to final length now as well. It's funny how much faster this goes the second time around after you've already done it once before. So I'm going to cut this extrusion down to final length now that I have my final size. And then we'll kind of pick up where I had left off before. That's as far as I can take this without having the door. So uh, we're gonna make the door next. So we're gonna make one big panel that'll go from the bottom rail, the face frame, all the way to the top rail, because the, uh, the door and then the drawer fronts are continuous with that V-board paneling. So I'll make one big door and then slice, or I guess I'll make one big panel and then slice a door out of it. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's, where's my V-bits? They're somewhere. This is one of them, I think. Yeah, there you go. Let's start making some V paneling again. Yeah, this is about as good as I can get it right now. I, uh, I ran out of adjustability in the hardware, um, so I probably have to tweak something with my install on that panel. But at this point, as far as the cabinet's concerned, it's pretty much done and ready to go off for uh, the side panels to be installed. And we need to put it back on here still, and then it can get set into the kitchen, and I can install this hardware really at any point. This door needs to get painted, so. Really the exercise here was just making sure that this hardware actually fits into the cabinet and the door kind of works. That's the whole point of what we just did here. <laughs>
here's a there's a handle anyway so uh, i'm gonna take this thing apart get this door off of here which it was a pain in the butt to get on here so i'm kind of upset that it comes off again <laughs> pull the uh the hardware panel out and then i'll go out to the barn and install those side panels that we made way back in the beginning so that this cabinet can uh, actually go into the house and be set and throw it back on here and all of that. So that is uh, this big giant cabinet. It's ready to uh, go in and be set. Uh, I'll have to come back at some point and mess with the pocket door some more to get that uh, dialed in and finalized. But at least this box can be, can be set and we can kind of move on with the, uh, the rest of the initial building of the cabinet boxes and, uh, and whatnot. So next time we're gonna build out the fridge surround and get this area here built. And then we will set that and this, and now complete the first main run of cabinets. They go around the room here. This cabinet and the fridge, um, they act as bookends essentially on either side of the kitchen and kind of tie things together because they have a very similar uh, design. So that's gonna do it for this one. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on this giant box, please feel free to leave a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time. <laughs> Happy water cake. Big old box. Ninety four and a quarter. <laughs>